love Heidi Lang. You see her on our shows in the morning. And now we're going to get to the real story of the fig cooking school, which is in Milford. It is. It's so weird to be here, Anne, without, like, spatulas and It's a plates. different animal, and, isn't it? And, yeah, and I, it's just I, a kitchen table. Yeah, and I came here in the studio without all my bags, and I usually bring literally everything but the kitchen Are sink. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, I think I'm going to be okay, <laughs> because there isn't actually a kitchen sink in the studio. <laughs> yes, no, there isn't. <laughs> Anyway, so Heidi Lang, let's tell your story about how the Fig Cooking School came to be. Sure. Um, you're a former journalist. You yes. worked at WABC, so you know about writing. I you do. know about pictures. You know and deadlines. So, so and deadlines. Mm -hmm. So that makes all of this come together. And we should mention that you're the new editor in chief and creative director of Fine Cooking yes. Magazine. Yes. Here it is. Super exciting. I'm going to get a subscription. Yes. Oh, please. Yes. All right. Your love of cooking, yes. where did it come from? So it started as a child. Um, I'm first generation in this country, so my mom would make great Eastern European what food. Romanian, um, primarily Romanian. Okay. My parents lived in Germany, but they were Romanian. And they met here. So I was, you know, I was really, I am the Romanian version of my big fat Greek wedding. When I watched <laughs> that movie, I said, oh, here's my life story. Oh, completely relate. You know, I was definitely that odd kid. And uh, so I spent a lot of time, my mother was very protective of me as the first generation only girl in the family and so I cooked a lot with her and baked a lot in what fact did you I make? Um, my mom makes actually because she lived, she's from Transylvania which is um, actually she didn't tell me that till I was 10 because she didn't want me to think I was the weird kid uh, so uh, we made a lot of things that were actually Austrian a lot of schnitzel a lot of stews um, very different from um, traditional Romanian food um, but I actually loved to bake at the time so I was the official baker in the family uh, something happened though when I went to college I decided that baking was just too uh, precise. You went to Columbia. I did. I went to Barnard and uh, I, I didn't, I just, I just decided that it was too, do you bake? Do you cook? Yes, I bake. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably a better baker than cooker because do you know why that is? I don't know why. Because baking is really a science. I mean, you can't like... <laughs> So you, Although you, I'm terrible in science. So, but think about it. You know, it's a half a cup of flour, right? You, sure. you can't vary from that. So if I see a recipe and it says uh, two cloves of garlic, that's a joke. Why bother? It's right. really six cloves of garlic. That's the I entry overdo point. on cinnamon all the time. Yeah. So there, because you, but you like cinnamon. Yes. So you, those, so you're in baking. You actually do change things a bit, huh? I do. Oh. I do. But I'm a renegade. Yeah, you are. So that's okay. Indeed. So, so, so you're a baker in the so family. Yeah, so yes. Yeah. So uh, then I went to college and I realized I, that I could make a lot of friends if I could cook for them. And I'm just actually very much an intuitive cook. Um, I just. I really can taste it even if I don't know how to make it. I just know what the flavor should be. I read about what the recipe was, is, and then I can just figure out how it should be, even if the recipe is wrong. So wow. it's kind of like um, a little bit like, you know, how composers hear the music sure. in their head. So I just know how I, how I want it to taste. Um, if I've tasted things that are similar to it, but I know I could do it a little bit differently. So, um, so I started doing the experimenting with that in college. Uh, and so, uh, so that's how I started cooking. And uh, but I didn't really cook a whole lot because uh, you know after I graduated from, I was actually a reporter while I was in college as well. I worked for a small, influential little newspaper, so and covered politics and our town. Okay. And um, and I covered you know Mayor Koch at the time. Sure. And I was just a regular reporter, but I was 19. You Think know. what you learned. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. It was really amazing. And it taught me, uh, that was actually the time in my life where I said, you know what, whatever it is you want to do, you will find a way to do it, even if you don't quite know it yet. Uh, so I was very determined. And when, you know, when you're in line, line by line with the same, with storied reporters in New York, that's a very tough thing to do, and you're covering the same beat. So I really got two educations. So I didn't have a lot of time to cook, but I loved to do it. Uh, and then I graduated from college. Uh, and actually, one of my first jobs out of school was to, I was a researcher in the Department of Consumer Affairs. It's an entry-level job. My job was actually to uh, report the prices of coffee and oil, heating oil, and something else. I always remember that. And I thought, oh, God, this is so boring. I can't stand doing this. I have to do something else. And so my parents lived near, uh, my father had a store, a camera store, and um, next door was a butcher, and um, his name was Richie, and he said, you know, if you ever want to find out 
do story about what's wrong, you know, with the meat and poultry that we all that we sell. There's a real story there. So I went back to the commissioner, and I said, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm just wondering if we should do something really interesting and really examine this as, from a consumer point of view. What is on the surface of the meat and poultry we all buy? And so it turned into a year-long project. I was wow. 22, and I worked. I still had to do the coffee and tea prices. <laughs> Your Cut bread and butter job, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd stay to <coughs> one and two in the morning and just. Uh, so uh, that's when you fell in love with food. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it was kind of. Well, you know, I mean, actually, that was weird because you'd think I would actually become a vegetarian after well, worrying about all the things that are on yeah, the surface. Yeah, yeah. So I worked on this thing, and I actually designed a scientific survey for, to collect samples around the city. And um, anyway, ended up being this big report. It was on 2020. Diane Sawyer's producer saw it, and it was a big splash in the city. It was really, really cool, really fun. Uh, so. Uh, um, uh, but at just around the same time, I, um, I actually met my husband, and um, while you were reporting, yes, oh, okay. and, and I was doing, and, and so, but we we weren't, you know, we weren't married yet, and I started cooking, you know, just things, and, and I honestly, to win his heart. I, I think actually, I think that's really I, actually why he married me because he didn't like chicken, and he had roast chicken for the first time that I made, and um, he thought it was the most amazing thing he ever had. So you know, so yes, yeah, so I started cooking more, uh, but it was always just something I did casually. I didn't really think very much about doing that professionally until. Um, I actually graduated, I then went to grad school, went to Columbia uh, Graduate School of Journalism, and then after that I decided to have another baby. So you I have, have three daughters. Three daughters, like you do. Yes, and the Fig School is named after them, it Fig. It is, Francesca, Francesca Isabella, Isabella, and Gabriella. Gabriella. So I needed to have another child so that I could name my... <laughs> You know, let's let's show the fig school because we've been talking a lot about your background. So there it is. This is this is in Milford. It and is it's stunning. Did you Thank pick you. that font? Uh, my daughter Gabrielle did. She's a graphic designer, and uh, she designed. So we we somehow came up with a weird sort of deal. We both love design, and so she did the ins outside. She came up with the strips, and I designed the inside. Uh uh, who wouldn't want to take a uh, cooking it's class here? Really, this is, fun. This is stunning and uh, very eclectic. So it doesn't have one feel to it. Um, it's a little modern, a little bistro. It's a little bit of everything. The books. Yeah. The they, books. Okay. So you you put them in there by color. Yes. Which caught my eye. We had to actually buy some extra yellow cookbooks. Uh, there's there's a cookbooks? shortage. Of, you wouldn't know this, but there's a shortage of yellow cookbooks. So we we've, had to buy some. We've learned something. <laughs> and then I I just picked out a, a few pictures. Um, this is Swedish. So am yes. I. <gasps> and so. That oh, yes. looks really, really good. Oh, you got this. Oh, yes, yes. And then the that next picture I picked is because you have a liquor license. We do. We make amazingly good cocktails. Well, I don't make them, but the people, but Gabrielle often makes them as well. Oh, they're really, really, they're always customized to um, the class that we're doing. So that was our signature cocktail for Christmas. All right. So young and old come to the Fig Cooking School to take classes. They do. Let's say I don't know anything about cooking. Yes. A lot you're of gonna, people don't. You're going to put on my apron yes. and you're going to make me be a good cook. So the, the challenge always is that, you know, we have people who come in who we've had actually people come in who are caterers who just want to have fun for the night, which, you know, and, and so we have people who don't know how to boil water. We also uh, I don't it, know how to boil water. Yeah, no, seriously, like people really don't know how to do anything. And so, um, and everyone walks away with a different, you know, with a different skill. Some sure. people learn a lot and some people just hone their skills. Um, well, the thing that always is amazes me, and, and I wondered about this when we opened, I just uh, wondered, you know, would we just have a lot of the, you know, the same demographic, the same people coming all the time? And I think because the, because it looks so, as you saw from the It looks pictures, like it's in France. Yeah, and it's also very eclectic. It's not feminine, it's not masculine, it's, kind, it's a very inviting space, and it's very bright and clean. Um, so everyone, I mean, it's appealing to everyone, so um, we have... Um, I'd say we have almost equal men and women. I mean, maybe a little bit, maybe 60-40. But we have, you know, we had um, uh, two high school graduates who were dating came to a class, you know, with people. And we have, you know, tattoo artists, state troopers. Uh, we have, have priests, eat, rabbi. Right? Everybody has to eat and everybody loves to eat. When so. did the light bulb go off that you said, I'm going to have a cooking school? Because I know yes. how to cook. I'm, I'm pretty good at this and I'm going to... Yeah. When did that happen? Uh, I, I know exactly when it happened. It happens whenever I have a child and they turn four. It's time for you to do something new. So one, when uh, Isabella was four, I went to grad school, and so when Francesca was four, I said, "Okay, it's time to do something new. I've got to do something new." And I decided that 
uh, you know, journalism had changed so much, um, and it's, was, it's a lot harder, you know, than it used to be. Uh, so much is free on the internet, and now that's so changing. Platforms. So many platforms. Yep. It's it's very crowded out there, and uh, so I decided I wanted to do something completely different. And my husband said, "Well, why don't you open a cooking uh, restaurant?" Well, that's very risky. And so I decided, well, instead of doing that, he was a very wise man. He said, well, you know, why don't you start teaching cooking classes here at our house? And so I said, oh, that's an interesting to idea. To see if you like to it. To see if you like it. And then, of course, that meant our house was a test kitchen and that he got to try lots of great food. He's a very smart guy. He is a guy. very smart man. Yes. So, so that's um, what I did. Do you go to bed at night and, and dream cooking and baking and what you're going to uh, yes. do for the next class? So you know, when you really love something, you feel the love, right? You know this. When you, when you love something, you do it all the time. So even when I'm not working, I'm thinking about recipes. When I go on vacation and I go to the beach, wherever I am, I've always got a handful of cookbooks or, or, or magazines because I really do, I really love it. So I, I get inspired by, um, a lot Everything by travel and by travel a lot too. So um, it's amazing the things that you learn from traveling that you don't necessarily see in cookbooks. So it's small little things. So I like to travel a lot and go to some really interesting places. How long has the cooking school been open? We've been actually open for 10 years, um, but I started in my house. And uh, when we started, you know, Gabrielle was 15 and she said, you know, Mom, I, she's a very sassy 15 or 16 year old, and said, I can think I can do your website. And I said, really, you know, that's kind of hard, but she did. She taught herself. So this is the thing. If you really love something, you'll teach, you'll, you'll learn it no matter what. And so we put it on the site and we were, you know, website, we were on, on the on internet. We were so excited and we waited and waited. Nobody came because, like, that's how new business to start. Do a sales job. Yeah. And so, you know, after a few years, we built and built, and before you know it, um, then we had a new problem that we had too many more people than we can have in our house. How you many know? have you taught? Oh, my God. That's a great question. Over 10 <gasps> years. Yeah, ballpark oh, it. Ballpark 10 or 15,000? 10 or 15,000? Yeah, maybe. Um, um, you know, at least 10,000, at least. Where did the person um, from the I'm farthest away come? Oh, we have people regularly who come from, um, from Western Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Any, anybody from Europe that you just happen we, to be in? Um, uh, we've had a lot of people buy, um, treat their friends from Japan and England for some strange reason to classes. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, so in 10 years, what's the best thing that's come out of this so far? Oh, uh, gosh, the people that I get to meet. Um, you know, it's amazing because it's it's very demanding. It's very it's very hard work. It's hard work to come up with recipes, but it's also just hard. You know, think about it. you have to you you have to talk and cook and watch what everyone's doing all at the same time. So it's very much a performance. Um, but what I just love about it is the the people who come and then say, you know, I was really nervous before I got here, and this was I haven't had this much fun in in in, in ages. And the fact that they're all coming from different walks of life and then sit at these long, those beautiful long tables, and the chatter is so loud that sometimes you think it's like a family reunion. Um, and I think that's because what we do is we're, it's really much more than about food. It, um, I've always said this, I really did this almost as a social experiment, because I really believe that food brings people together. Well, food is love. It right? is love, and you make food, great food for somebody you care about. What's the so. weirdest thing you've ever made? In class. Oh wow! The weirdest thing I ever we ever made in class. Hmm. People don't actually like weird food. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why so, I asked. It. So <laughs> um, you say pretty. Yeah. There's something that there. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you though. There are things that I love to make. And I just can't get people on board. Like, well, you know, like there's actually a class that we have um, now that um, I just I know that people wonder about this dessert. It's called Svechkin Knödel. It's a, a plum and it's wrapped in dough and with breadcrumbs and it's Yum. fried. Yeah, right. What's wrong How with you? I know because they haven't heard of it. So you know, so there are things like that. There are a lot of things like that. Um, there are things that we do that surprise people. Like we make this great, great. Uh, dessert called Sprisolona. It's Italian. It's from northern Italy. And if you go to, that's the thing that's amazing. I was just in northern Italy in the spring. And in uh, Parma and Bo Bologna and that whole area, you see Sprisolona in all the bakeries. Like literally, it's like cupcakes. And here, have you ever seen no. that? Never, right? So it's interesting how we know certain desserts or certain meals, certain kinds of dishes from certain countries, and others just somehow escape. And uh, my version of it um, has. Um, a combination of uh, vanilla, almond extract, orange blossom water, and a lot of anisette, and a lot of anisette sugar. And when people smell these, all these scents together, they say, I'm so sure that I'm not going to like this. 
And I said, well, just wait, it's chemistry. You know, it, when you put all these things together, it becomes something else. It's no longer I'm what it is. It just with oh, the words you just so good. I'll bring you some. It's so good. Promise. I, I do. I promise. And it's great because it's a very informal dessert. But people always think they're not going to like that until they taste it. And there's so much about cooking and baking that's like that. That it's like building a house. You know, you have these raw ingredients, just like you have, you know, two by fours and beams or whatever. And then you put it together in new ways, and suddenly you have something completely different. People are afraid of what they don't know. Once they exactly. once they know it, they're like, exactly. oh, exactly. Okay, they're whatever. afraid of what they don't know. All right, what are you doing with Fine Cooking <laughs> Magazine? Can I tell you the story of how this came yes, about? Yes, how did this come because about? Because I have to actually thank Fig for having this come about. So uh, we were teaching um, northern Ita Italian classes are very, very popular. And uh, so speaking of Italian food, actually, we were making this dessert that night. I remember very well. And I uh, was sold out class, and um, uh, everyone's there, but one person hasn't arrived yet, and she finally comes. And um, uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, it was a publisher of Tauntum Press. Um, you know, you never know. You never know. That's why you always have to be on your A game. And so she came in, and the last uh, spot to stand in was actually next to me. And she came around, and we always, one of the things we do in classes, we always um, have everyone introduce themselves. And I memorize your name, your name, no matter how many people are there. I don't need, did people ask me Is how you do that? I don't know. Do. I don't oh. even know. I think it's being a journalist, honestly. You know how you listen very carefully, and you've. Or you're you so, should. Well, you should, like we were saying before. Yeah. Uh, but you know how hard that is for some people to do. It, if you're used to doing it, it just comes naturally. And also just being genuinely interested in people. I mean, I genuinely want to know how every single person ticks, you know. And so we always ask, I always ask you what your name is, your favorite thing to eat, cook, or, or bake. Um, and then I memorize your names. Anyway, so we got to the last person, and Renee said, oh, I'm the publisher of Taunton Press. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, I, we published Fine Cooking. I said, I, oh, I know that. <laughs> you did? You oh, did yes. I've, got, I've, I've been getting this magazine. So this is like your Bible. I love this magazine. Oh, okay. Love this magazine. And so, uh, so, you know, after, so during the class, I could tell that she liked what was happening. And afterwards, she said, we should talk about, you know, this. And um, over the course of the next month or two, you know, she said, I was, I'm looking for somebody to head the magazine that really understands the brand, that represents our brand. And she said, you, you really understand who, who we are because it's who you are. It's what you do. And so that's how... How, how thrilling. It was so much fun. It really was. I hope they're going to pay you very well. <laughs> Yeah, they pay me well. That's very good. So yes. how are you how are you gonna change this? Uh, are you changing yes. the font? Are you changing So yes, what? so we're going to have uh, we're going to expand the magazine into being um, much have much more of a digital presence. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's it's so difficult. I love to, the slicks though. I know and, which right? is an old term for magazines. I know, I know, and I think there's nothing like holding a magazine. I know. And what page but was that on and I, I can know. just go to what I don't have to but you, you know. know what? We have to move I into know. the 21st yes, we do. century. It's yes, so we do. hard, but we have to. So so we're going to have a lot, many new features. Uh -huh. We're going to have a lot of interactive videos. I really want to see, instead of seeing the same names you see all the time on the big Food Network, uh, you know, the same famous chefs, I want to give uh, chefs that are up and coming who are super talented, Bingo. super talented, mm -hmm. an opportunity to do some videos for us. And so I want to spend more time going on site to where they are and to bringing in a lot more uh, ethnic food. Um, there's some, but um, you know, the world has gotten the great thing, the, the good news, bad news about the internet is that everyone's connected to the screen. But the good news is that it's made the world, in some ways, in a wonderful way, a smaller place because yes. you can attain anything. And so many of us travel a lot more as well because now we have gotten a taste of what something might be like yeah and so um, so I want to bring a, a lot of those flavors but not in an intimidating way I think sometimes you know some some too of, many some, ingredients or, yeah you yeah. know I mean I'm do you remember gourmet magazine sure. right? so it was a great magazine a really great magazine but it was it, it was it was they probably were, too much for people. And I know? tried to make some recipes out of right? there. I was like, there, there's a lot going on. And here. I loved it. For yeah. me, it was wonderful. Yeah. But it, but people just want to be told what to do, and they want to be able to, to be accessible. I think if gourmet was, uh, it's in, still published. I think it'd be easier now because ingredients are more accessible. Yes. You know, I mean, you know, you just press. You know, a I used button, to get right? that 30 years ago, and and when you just said that, I didn't even know that it wasn't around anymore. But I used to, you know, when yeah. I had my kids when they yeah. were little, I, I was, yeah, it was a shocking. Uh, bad news for us foodies. It yeah. was such a great magazine. So I think what we need to do is take things that people don't know they don't know and that they would love to know. Um, foods from, you know, uh, far-flung places and, and also holidays that 
aren't necessarily holidays we know. Um, there are many holidays around the world and food traditions that go along with those uh, that are just incredible. So we're going to be bringing that to readers in a really exciting way, uh, ways that they just haven't seen it. Been Do you done. get to travel with this? I sure as heck hope so. <laughs> oh, well, that should be in the yeah, fine print. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. No, I, um, and so I also want to go on on, you know, t I want to go to the sources of people. I also think at some point we want to find a way of uh, bringing back people's re people's recipes that are getting lost. You know, this is happening all over the world, not just in America. You know, I know it's a big problem in Thailand, for example. It's very hard to actually get authentic Thai food yeah. because everything's been dumbed down a little bit. So I think we'll want to preserve those. But, but we also want to make sure that um, people who have young families can make interesting food. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want this to be a, a, a magazine that people feel, um, you know, just, you know, when they see uh, an ingredient they don't know, they just toss their, their hands up and say, we can't do this anymore. Well, you're the right person. She's oh, right. thank you. You're the right person. Thank you. All right, just to sum up. Yes. Um, what happens, uh, how do I get to the fig school and what happens when I get there? I know you put the apron on us. You or, put an apron on. So, so what happens there. and how long are the classes and, and all of that? Uh, the classes are usually three hours long. Um, so just one or is it a week? You can take as many classes as you want. Gotcha. We don't make people sign up or commit to, you know. So a three hour one. Yeah, three hour class. And um, first we introduce ourselves and then we go over the menus. And then, you know, in some classes, uh, group, uh, the group is divided into sections and then only some people make the main course and every, it's sort of you make the dessert. But I feel like it's much better when you make everything because, you know, then you, that's why you're there. And so that's a lot harder for me because I have to sort of like make it the whole group involved. And are you there for every class? I am there for every class. Oh, that's I, awesome. I am. I am there for every class. And so now that now with fine cooking, I'm hiring more people to do some of the administrative stuff I used to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also do um, team building events. So it's a great, you know, it's great corporate team events and also special occasions. We actually had um, recently, and this is when you asked me what's, you know, uh, what's, you know, who are some of the Best the best people I've met or, or the most gratifying part of the experience. We actually had a family who came, um, the, the mom in the family was dying of breast cancer oh. and she only had a few weeks to live. And so um, they wanted, uh, for Christmas, they knew this was gonna happen. So they wanted to have an experience instead of just changing gifts. So they, they, they bought a class to come and I remember just everyone at the end was crying saying this was just such a wonderful memory for us all to have together with her. So, you know, that's the magic. That really is the magic. Um, and, and, you know, it's so wonderful to be able to, you know, love something and be passionate about it um, and to, you know, to be able to do that every day of your life. Actually, seven days a week. <laughs> Um, and now I get to now I get to uh, influence what people are going to be thinking about food and eating across the country, which is I feel a, a huge responsibility and also just makes me giddy with joy. Well, you can you do know? it in your so, sleep. Yes, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's so, so wonderful to see somebody that loves what they do. I mean, it's just oozing out of your pores. Thank you. Thank I, you. I just love it. <laughs> so lovely to meet you. Oh, it was so great to meet you. And it's the figcookingschool.com. It is fig, figcookingschool.com and we're right off um, uh, 95. is very easy to get. Just Oh, and the other thing is it's right by the beach. So uh, it's two like. blocks from the beach. Um, when we bought the property, it was, uh, I, bu I bought the building and it was like a bright orange on the outside, a, just a decrepit building. And we gutted the whole thing and we thought once this is done, oh my God, imagine being able to take a walk on the beach afterwards. Now ask me how many times, now literally I can be at the beach in 60 seconds. Ask me how many times I've been there this year. None. Mm. <laughs> because you're too busy doing this. I did go at night on 4th of July. And just real quickly, how many people in the class? Uh, um, no, no more than 20, 18 no to 20. 20. And sometimes fewer, fewer people sign up, but that's about it. I feel it. like that could be a TV sitcom <gasps> in there. Well, you know when it really is, oh, it can be. And it's really sometimes a sitcom before. <laughs> Well, we're just all running around it's like, do you have the blank? You know, yes, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of really fun people who come to the classes and can be really, really very, very humorous. So it's really wonderful. A joy to meet you, Thank Heidi. Thank you. A joy to meet you as Thank well. Thank you so much. So great to, to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>